as y'all know, uh, as many of y'all may know, the day of my last day here at home was, as you know me, it's, uh, it's been an experience that I, it's been a pleasurable ride. I came here out of prison, like many of you all, with three years parole hanging over my head after doing 27 years, nine months, and two days. I was scared of the world because all I knew was prison. I can deal with that. I'm real comfortable in that lifestyle, maybe just because I did 36 years of it. But out here, it's like another challenge. It's a scary challenge, and I love fear. I'm comfortable with fear. I'm comfortable with action. But out here, you have to, you know, you have to be more intelligent with dealing with things, and, and I wasn't used to those kind of things. I'm just used to, this is the law, do it or else. But the more I was out here, the more comfortable I came with the fact that I love it. I love being free. I love being able to deal with problems rationally instead of physically. I embrace forgiving people for the things that they may have done to me. Although I have an ulterior motive because I want people to forgive me for the things that I did to them. And so I came here with that three years parole, and I was worried about what I was going to do if, if there was no homeboys. It was always in my mind, like, what if? I said, well, I got friends that would look out for me. But, you know, I used to be a cocaine addict. And the reason I quit cocaine was because I don't like being a slave to nothing. I don't like to depend on nothing. I don't like nothing that can to control me. And that's why I quit. And I never went back to it since and never will go back. But it's also depending on people that I have in my life that will be looking out for me. I didn't like to be, I didn't like that crutch. Because what if they would disappear? What did I have? Well, I have a lifetime imprisonment. What did that get me out of here? Nothing. All that does is show that I made some bad mistakes. But that ain't gonna get me to be able to survive out here. I needed something more. As I came here, homeboys, and I was weak and confused because the only policy and only laws that I knew was prison law. Jail law. Homeboys helped me clear out my head and get rid of that law and embrace the law of freedom and society. And I love it. I can't stop swimming in it every day. So I got here and I, in 13 months I got on parole. Great accomplishment. I felt freer. Although I never was stopped by the police, I even expected it, but it never happened. I was looking for it, but it never happened. And sometimes I was just downright disappointed that it did. <laughs> <laughs> because I was ready. I had my ID, I had my license, I had my <laughs> Come on, please. <laughs> they never came. But I guess it must have been something that they could sense that I was a waste of their time. And so I passed on that knowledge and every other bit of positive information that I can pass on to the trainees here and people that I've met. And I wonder what I'd be able to do next. What if homeboys didn't exist? What if I didn't have people in my life that would support me? What if I didn't have a great family? I see people, I thought about this because I would see people as I passed out the freeway, you know, you see people out there asking for money and stuff like that. 
and I would give it to him because I'm like, damn, if that was me, I would want somebody to give it to me. But then I said to myself, I would never live like that. <clears throat> Not that I was better, but I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't accept it. I wouldn't accept that there wasn't something I could do to better myself. There's certain things that I just don't accept, and if I don't accept it, I'm going to keep fighting for the change. They sentenced me to death in 1985 and sent me to death row. And I told the judge when he sentenced me, Commissioner Kyle, I said, I'll be back. And he gave me that look at me, right? Okay, just sentenced to death. Get him on out there. And uh, when I came back in 1996 and they resentenced me to life without the possibility of parole, after he got through sentencing, I said, Judge Kyle, I told you I'd be back. <laughs> And he said, yeah, you did that, Mr. Wharton. You did. And I said, guess what? He turned around up to me and said, what? I said, I'll be back again. And in 2006, my sentence was overturned. And I spent four years running around in that L.A. County jail. And uh, I finally got out in 2010. And I went back to Norwalk Court and I was I had to go find Judge Cowell. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up in this courtroom. We had just finished with a case I faced. Judge Cowell. <laughs> yes, can I help you? I said, it's me, James Wharton. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 he laughed and he told me to come in this chamber. Now that took me for a loop. I'm like, hey. So we sit there and talk and had coffee. But it seemed that everybody that I grew to hate didn't hate me. It was like a business. Thing. And he was glad that it was out what I was doing. I said, I'm working in Homeboy Industries. And he said, I heard a lot of good things about it. And this is all I knew right here, Homeboy Industries. I got up every morning. I looked forward to coming here. And you know, and for those that know me and heard me speak before, I'm always saying that God is not our slave. If we want something, we're going to have to work at it. If you want to be able to accomplish something, you're going to have to work for it. Anything you want to do in life, you're going to have to work for it. And so about a month ago, when I enrolled in college, although that, that title, where she had written, just kept pushing me to go to college. We could do it, and I'm like... I'm too old for that, I'm, I'm right here. She, but she refreshed me on it. I eventually started, but it was too much for me to go to college and work. There were several times a week that I would go home and I'd wake up and I would still have my clothes on sitting in the chair and fell asleep. And uh, as y'all would know, when y'all get to like about 40 years old, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, uh, but I had a I have a counsel with my past relatives who passed on, they my counsel. I sit in the dark and I talk to them. And I was talking to them about how can I help home or industries and I'm talking and everything. And I, my grandfather would say, what have you done? I said, well, I've been talking to people. And he said, can you do more? Yes, there is. I can do more. Even though I'm 58 years old, I'm going off to college, I'm going to get my degree. And like I told the judge when he sent it to me, I'll be back. And uh, I'll be back regularly to let y'all know how I'm progressing. And I'm looking for y'all to join me. Let's invade every college campus. Every <laughs> we need to be ready to leave here and the transfer, you have to go. We have to go out because we all can't stay here. The majority of us must go out. We must go out of the country. We must blaze some trails. We must be inspiration by our actions to show others that if I can do it, you can do it. And Maria always was an inspiration to me. Then she passed me on the jury. I was scared about that. Well, you getting rid of me, but I believe I'm trying. And Jerry was just as great as Maria. In fact, he was always there with me when I went to the parole office, turning in 
my paperwork to show that I had accomplished this and I accomplished that. And when I got off the road, he was right there with me in the, in the parole office. And uh, great accomplishment. And all of us need to feel that. There's nothing like being able to accomplish something in this world. Especially with all the things we've been through in our life, all the things that have happened to us. If, you, if you're able to hear my words, if you're able to think about the things that happened to you, then you're able to overcome those things. You have to use it for gasoline to help you inspire. If those who told you that you ain't going to make it, you need to use that as gasoline to fuel the fire in you to succeed. To show, yes, I can. Because if you don't believe it, nobody will believe it. You have to believe in yourself. You have to take advantage of that. Case management. Lord and mercy, if you can get the mental health, the amazing group. Mary, I can't say enough about you. Uh, Consuelo, Teresa, Fahima, always welcome me to come into the office and talk. Jackie. And my big sister, I'm just a couple of years old, and so Veronica makes you having fun in New Zealand somewhere. But uh, Tom, Larry, I don't even have to talk about this man back here. He ain't never hit those, but <laughs> his spirit is here every day. Everybody knows. You look in that office, you don't, he may not be there physically, but you can see him. You can imagine him there. You can imagine him everywhere you go. Because his spirit is just that day I'm strong. You look forward to the thought of the day, you look forward to him talk. When you see, when you think about all the great men, great women in this world that have accomplished great things that's going down in history, there's no way in this world that they could be sitting at the table having dinner or having wine or having any kind of talks. Father Greg not be there with me. Greatness is, is something that we all have, but a lot of us don't reach that level because we cut ourselves off too soon. We give up too soon. As long as you can strive and be better, do it. I love all y'all, and I continue to hope that everybody play a part. <coughs> and make the homeboys great. Because it won't be great unless you give everything you got to make it great. It take all of us. We can't expect to ride on the back of our team for a lifetime. He give us the will. He help us build our wings up. We strong. He help us build up, get ready for the fight of life. Let's fight. Let's win. That's the homeboy message. And that's the right way to be. I thank all of you.